Alright, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers, so make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man, he gonna hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons, but man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next, and let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace. All right, man, let's talk about your boy, my guy. Used to be my guy, Luke Kennard. Um, really, y'all boy, man. And a lot of y'all was complaining and crying when they traded Luke Kennard. What I think ended up with being Sadiq Bay. Now, Sadiq Bay in one season has been way better than Luke Campbell been for an entire season. I don't care about the averages and the couple games he played. Luke Kennard was this, this version or his pissing version of Kyle Singler. You know, they just didn't want to let go. You know what I'm saying? Of Kyle Singer or Luke Kennard, neither one of them could play. Both from Duke, both both stink like Dukey. And I told y'all, and I and obviously Troy Weaver is looking better and better every day. Okay, shout out Detroit Pistons talk playlist. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And I told y'all about Catavius Caldwell Pope, Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond. Now y'all listen to these emotional fanboys on YouTube who don't know shit about basketball. You know, and they want to keep everybody, like a kid in the candy store, a kid in the toy store. They want every teddy bear. They want every video game. You know, no way you can get rid of Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond is so good. And look what Andre Drummond doing with the Lakers. They ready to, they ready to burn his ass up and put him back to the trade, the waiver line. You know, and I told y'all, I told y'all, the, the Pistons had they blew it up. Now your Blake was all NBA third team. Had they traded him and Andre Drummond, they would probably be sitting on at least two number one picks right now. And maybe a couple of expiring contracts. You know, had they not played Blake Griffin in the Milwaukee series, like they did Grand Hill back in the day in the playoffs, we could be talking about something. And Troy Reaver is undoing their period people saying, well, you owe Joe. We owe Joe Dumars an apology. No, I love Joe Dumars. No problem with Joe Dumars, but he sucked at being at drafting players. He was he was the equivalent of Bill Belichick. Think, nobody ever made never said this before. He was the equivalent of Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick couldn't draft to save his motherfucking life. Excuse my language. Go look at it. All the first round, he did better drafting the later rounds. Then he did draft in the first round. All, all his drafts was garbage. Damn near. What they did well, they was able to get the best corners in the league to lead Revis, uh, Ty Law, whatever. They was able to take late round picks, undrafted picks, a good couple early picks every now and again, and put them into a system like Kyle Van Noy. He won shit in Detroit. He shined in, in New England. Got cut in the new, uh, Miami like back with New England. That's what he's good at. Remember Deion Branch uh, left for a big contract with us. Seattle came back. You know, that's what it was. Joe Dumars. Joe Dumars salvaged people's career. Ben Wallace didn't really get on the floor. Washington came to Detroit, found the perfect role. Rip Hamilton got traded for Jerry Stackhouse. You ask anybody at the time, Jerry Stackhouse was three or ten times better basketball player than Rip Hamilton. Chauncey Billups sat on the bench all these years, back at home in Denver, but one and on. You know, he, you know, post people let him as trash. Top three pick, I think he was. Came to Detroit, found himself. Tayshawn Prince, the late first round draft pick, came. Even though they didn't give him an opportunity to play, they was about to, they were about to lose to T-Mac in the first round, which at that point, if we lost that series, maybe we never win the championship. They bring Tayshawn Prince in. He put the clamps on T-Mac. They advance. You know, Rasheed Wallace, you know, traded to Atlanta, Portland. He was a cast out of Portland. He came to Detroit, found his road. Corliss Williamson, I think he was uh, just out of the lottery pick, you know, was a great player at Arkansas, you know, didn't really cut it, I think, with the Kings and a few other teams, probably, probably came here, found a niche. Mike James bounced around the league, Lindsey Hunter, great player, you know, kind of Joe Dumars left, kind of lost his way. You know, they, they just did a great job. Emma McCord really didn't do shit here, got that contract in Utah. So we can go on and on about these things. Joe Dumars, on the, for the record, except for Charlie Villanueva and Ben Gordon and Josh Smith, he was good at finding roles for players. When you're talking about the Rodney Whites and all the bad draft picks he had, he wasn't good doing the day to day. Doing, he wasn't good doing the offseason things for the most part when you're talking about drafting and evaluating. 
picking Darko over Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. How fucking stupid can you be? I don't owe him an apology. That piston, that piston team needed somebody that can get their own bucket. You know, they need somebody. Only the different the reason why you take Rip, because Rip over Stackhouse, Rip can fit. Rip is a team player. Stackhouse is an individual player. But same thing with Adrian Danley. You know, they were somebody who can get him the ball and they get you a bucket when you need one. They guarantee 20 points a game. You know, and the Pistons really never really integrated those guys, or, you know, good and with the team. You know, now they got an opportunity to get a Jalen Green or whatever. But honestly, Rip Rip would just fit better, but Jerry Sackhouse was somebody they needed. Then they have an opportunity to get Dwayne Wade or Carmelo Anthony. Could you imagine, you know, you know, throwing Wade in there, you know, letting Wade be the two, pushing Rip to the three, bringing Tayshawn off the bench. Could you imagine that? Or bringing Carmelo, you know, you can let Carmelo play the two because Tayshawn can guard a bunch of twos, put Tayshawn to the two, Carmelo at the three. Could you imagine that? The only problem with that Piston team was like, they went through droughts. Put Stackhouse or put Dwayne Wade and Melo in there, it wouldn't be no fucking droughts. Instead of playing Boston 65 to 69 in the fourth quarter, fucking game would have been 100 to 60 something. You feel what I'm saying? It would have been 160. It would have been, come on. And, and honestly, I think Dwayne Wade would have fit better because he was a willing defender. He was a willing defender. But back in code with Luke Kennard is just to the point with him. It was, it was a great move to let him go. You turn him into a first-round draft pick, you know, that, that's that's immaculate. You turn him into Sadiq Bay, he'd never be a better player than Sadiq Bay. And I don't know what the Clippers was thinking. That's the dummy move of the century. I said again, and he's only 24. He probably can bounce back. I doubt it. But that's the dummy move of the century. That's the dummy move. I'll keep saying it. So, Let's talk about all the people that went behind Luke Kennard. Back to back. Donovan Mitchell, bam, out of bio. Remember with uh, y'all boy uh, Stan Van Gundy, Mitchell said he didn't miss a shot and they still passed on him. It really wasn't nobody after that. Well, nobody after that. They got Frank Jackson on the team. Justin Jackson, Harry, J- Henry, G- Harry Gow, TJ Lee, DJ Wilson, Justin Patton. I mean, nothing. Nobody. Carl Kuzma was the only one. Kayla Swanigan, he ate himself out the league. You know. You know, so realistically, man, there there were there were two options. Three at the most were cool one. It was either Mitchell, Adebaye, or Kuzma. That's it. And ultimately, in the 17 draft, they got. Think about who they got in their roster right now. They got Josh Jackson from that draft, Dennis Smith Jr., uh, and Frank Jackson. All was in that draft. And also, Dylan Dylan Brooks turned into a really good uh, player too. You know, you end up with Dylan Brooks. He Dylan Brooks is really a piston type player. You know, but you know, honestly, it's just to the point where. You know, they made the right decision. You can sit back and, 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 and exhale. Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard was terrible. And, and everybody would talk about the spurts that he played in. Well, he he had the potential. But honestly, this year he only played he played six he played sixty three games. Started seventeen, eight point three points a game. One point seven assists, less than three rebounds. He shot 47% from the field and 44% for three. But he only took six and a half, over six and a half field goals a game. One thing about Luke Kennard, his heart just his heart just didn't um he just didn't have the aggressiveness. That was the biggest thing with him. He just wasn't aggressive enough. And I think they're having the same issue in, in the Clippers, which I don't watch them. But this dude should be taking 15, 20 shots a game, even in a row off the bench. And then he doesn't stay healthy. That's another big thing. He doesn't stay healthy. 
And Troy Weaver has made some great moves. His best move so far, obviously, a lot of people say Jeremy Grant, blase, blah, blase, blah, blah, right? But his best move was taking Luke Kennard and turning him to and turning him to Sadiq Bay. That was that's that was his best move. Tell me I'm lying. That was his best move. Was take was taking a negative and turning into a positive. You know? And had had he knew, had he knew this was gonna pan out like this, I I don't think he would have brought in Jeremy Grant and Josh Jackson. Had he knew this was gonna play like this, maybe he went maybe he do, he do something different. You know. But honestly, I think it's a blessing where you hoard you hoard these guys, right? You see what you if you can win or not. Or if you start to win, then you can take those assets and turn them into the veteran player you need to get you over the top or get you to the playoffs. You know. But it's no hard feelings towards Lou Kennard at all. None. It's just to the point where it was, you know, this is Troy Reaver's best move. You know, Sadiq Bay would have turned into, I don't know, let's pull up, what is it, the 2020 NBA draft. You know, and we don't know because they had an irregular season, so I'm not calling these guys a bust. Had they end up with Tyrese, I like Tyrese Max. He's playing, he played 14 points. Had he turned into like Peyton Pritchard where he really wasn't doing much. Maybe we can hold our 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 opinion on that, but Sadiq Bay can ball. I told he could ball before the draft, and I think, I think, um, you know, Trey Weaver got it right all the way around so far. Moving somebody that wasn't going to be healthy, nobody was ever going to reach his potential or be aggressive, and turn him into somebody that could, you know, potentially help you win a championship and be a, a cornerstone to your franchise. So let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all my social media links description. You can reach me at any of those. If you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video question, whatever, touch business on the channel. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, CJGood313. Yes, in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Thanks for the donate. Share, share the video. Check out Detroit